Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the Super Duty Build. I finally got a day off of work to get in the shop and actually get something done. Now, you guys might remember a couple episodes ago, I showed you this clear panel cutout. This is made from Aircraft Specialty, and we have been working together to design this panel. I kind of sent them a drawing of where I want everything, and they put it all into a CAD program. And what they do is they cut it out of this clear Lexan before they cut it out of aluminum. They send you the Lexan to make sure, you know, all your avionics fit, make sure your switches fit, make sure the panel itself fits into the airplane. And since everything fit great on here, this is the final revision of my panel. I gave them the go ahead to go ahead and cut it out of aluminum. And this is my aluminum panel. This is the real actual panel. It's cut out of 0.063 aluminum. And you can see it's all, I guess, laser cut is how they do it for all the avionics and everything that goes in here. All of the holes are cut in here for the, the switches, the circuit breakers. And you can see it even has all of the holes for the nut plates that uh, actually hold all the avionics in. So this piece is ready to test fit into the airplane. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it in the airplane against the, like the original um, uh, Super Duty panel, and then I'll go ahead and match drill these holes that mount this panel around the perimeter to the sub panel. You can see I have the panel now sort of installed. I've only drilled two holes. You can see the two Clecos there. And you can see how nice and flat the panel sits up next to this sub panel. But that is because I had to remove all of the Clecos around the edge. If I put all of these Clecos back in, this panel back here, the original panel, gets a little wavy and this doesn't sit flat up against it. So I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue or not, since most of this gets cut away. If it is a problem, I think what I'll do is I'll order a new panel from Zenith without these holes drilled. That way I can put this panel in here flat and then drill these holes through the original panel. But I think what I'm going to do is, this is all I need to do in the airplane. I have it clecoed there twice, so I can remove this panel and this panel Put it on the workbench and then drill out the rest of these mounting holes and then i think when i have it apart i'll go ahead and cut out the whole center section of this old panel put it back in and then see how it works all i really need is for this panel to stay flat so now with the panel removed from the airplane i'm going to go ahead and just drill the rest of these holes and then cut out the main panel You can see these holes along the bottom. The screws that go in these holes will get threaded into the steel frame. So this is the, the bar of the frame that those screws will go into. So I'm hoping this is, might be thick enough to get a, maybe one or two threads on, in, on the tube so that I could just thread uh, those screws into here. So I'm gonna wait to drill those holes because I'm not sure exactly what size I need to make them yet. Well, you can see before I removed the panel, I traced some of the holes in here, just so I kind of know where to cut. I marked the holes with pen on the bottom, so I kind of know how high to go. And then up here is gonna be where it's close. This is for that Garmin 175 GPS. So, you know, the panel I'm gonna cut out about here like this going down, but up here, I'll have to have it come up and cut out around here. So it'll be a little bit skinnier up on the top. So anyway, with those marked, I can start making some lines on here of where I want to cut out the center part of this panel. So here's all I did to try to get a somewhat consistent line around there. I just took some of these sticks, I made a little tab like that, and then 
held the pen up against it like this, and that kind of gives it an even spacing to trace around the edge. Yeah, here's what it looks like on here. My camera doesn't want to focus on the aluminum because all the lights giving it different signals. But anyway, you can kind of see where the, the line is here. And up here, I'll have to go up around the GPS. So that gives me a line to cut. So I can cut out the whole inside of this panel now. Now, of course, you never want to leave a 90 degree angle in the aluminum. So for this corner and the corner on the other side, I'll use a unibit just to get a curve to that corner instead of having it 90 degrees. All right, guys, I have now cut out the inside of this panel. So this is what's left. It's just a frame. Now, I know you guys are going to ask how I did this. And I did it probably the slowest, most ridiculous way possible. And that's with this nibbler. And this literally takes off like 1 16th at a time. <laughs> and I went all the way around. It's just the only tool I have available to me that works. I have a jigsaw with an aluminum, a fine tooth blade that works on aluminum but that blade is ruined and I have to go try to find another blade somewhere. So I had this here, that's what I used. Also, if you're going to have your panel made by um, aircraft specialty, like you're gonna have the main cutout like this made, I do believe that they laser cut this also. So you can send them your panel and they'll cut that out. Ask, ask Steve at aircraft specialty, I think they do do this, but uh, in this case, I just, I just did it here because it was, uh, quick and easy to do. So now I'm gonna put this back in the fuselage and then I'm gonna see how this panel sits up against here. All right, I have the panel installed right now. And by the way, if you notice, this is just rough cut. It's not filed or sanded yet. I just don't wanna put much time into it until I know if it's gonna work or not. So now that that's in there, I will see how the panel fits on top of that. All right, with this panel now clecoed in here, now it's not screwed to the bottom yet, but when I look down here, it looks like the panel has a bow to it. And it's, it's not this panel, it's just the way that that sub panel, it looks like is, is uh, connected to the, the glare shield and the frame. So it's hard to tell, but it looks like there's a little bit of curve. But what I'm thinking is once I have the bottom screwed in and I actually have all the instruments and everything installed on here, it might, make this flat. So I think the next step would be to install all of the nut plates in these pre-drilled holes. Again, uh, aircraft specialty, when they cut this out, they, it's kind of nice because they pre-drill all the holes for uh, all the nut plates. So it makes it kind of easy. <laughs> I just have to dimple them because I'm going to use flush rivet. So I'll, or not dimple, but I'll countersink them and then put in a flush rivet and uh, put in the nut plates. So I think I'm going to do that and then actually mount the Dynon avionics in here so it holds it rigid and then put this back in and see how it works. I have the panel removed from the airplane and I'm going to countersink the holes for these nut plates so that I can mount the avionics in here and then test fit it into the airplane. If you're using Dynon equipment, I just wanted to kind of point out here, you're going to need two different kinds of nut plates. And this is kind of spelled out in the manual for Dynon, but just to give you a shortcut here, uh, you can see there's two different kinds of nut plates. This one is, has the hole in the middle and then a, a rivet hole on either side. These ones here have the hole on one side and then both rivet holes on one side of the screw hole. So here are the two different kinds of nut plates you're going to use. Now don't worry about trying to see that number. I'll put it in the description box below. But you can see this is the nut plate with the, the rivet holes on both sides. And over here, we have the nut plates with the rivet holes on one side of the screw hole. So again, part numbers will be down in the description box. I'm using these aluminum uh, flush mounted solid rivets. And the ones I'm using here are the 83-3.5. And, and the tool I'm going to use to countersink these holes is this countersinking tool. Now, just in case you are not familiar with these countersinking tools, inside here is a, a countersinking bit, which actually cuts the, the countersink. And you can see this is kind of spring-loaded like this. 
And so what you do is you put this flush on your surface like this. This end here where my right hand is goes into the drill and you push down and that bit comes down like that and countersinks your hole. Now this is adjustable by loosening this and then pulling it apart like this. You can screw it like this and what that does is that determines how far down this countersinking tool goes. Now you guys remember I might have said a few times that every airplane I build, I, I think I get better and better and I learn what to do and what not to do. And guys, I'm going to tell you from experience, ask me how I know, do not try to judge this by looking at it and then try to countersink a hole in your real part because I guarantee you, you will go too deep. You always want to take a test piece of material, drill the proper size hole in it, and then you can, uh, you can test drill some, some countersinks with here. So that's what I've done. I've taken a piece of scrap, I've drilled a hole in it, and now I'm going to see how, how this works. If it goes too deep, then I'll drill another hole, adjust this a little bit, and keep doing this until I get the countersink perfect then once the countersink is set perfectly on here, I'm ready to drill the panel. Now what I do is after I drill the hole, I put a rivet in there and see this one is actually too deep. So what I'll do is I'm going to drill another hole in here. And then I will adjust this a little bit. So I need to, uh, I'll unscrew this so it doesn't come down quite as far. We'll put this bad boy back in the drill and let's try it again. Now see, if this would have been my actual instrument panel, I would have a, a, a countersink that's too deep. That's why you always wanna try it in some scrap first. Okay, I can tell that's not deep enough. I'm gonna to try to go a little bit more, just push a little bit more. Let's try a rivet in here now. And that's not quite deep enough. The rivet head is still kind of sticking out a little bit. So what I can do is adjust this just a, a little bit more that way. And let's try it again. And the other thing I want to point out is just because you have this set, you know, it, it'll still go in deeper than, uh, than you think. If you put a ton of pressure on here, you can still go a little bit deeper than you want. So always when you're doing this, try to put a consistent amount of pressure on it or else even though it's adjusted, you still could wind up going a little bit too deep. So let me try this one. Nope, that rivet still sticks out just a hair. Let's try this again. We'll uh, adjust this. Um, I need to go deeper, right? So I need to screw this in. Let's try that in here. All right, let's see how that works. Actually, it looks pretty good. Put a rivet in and that's perfect. There we go. Now it's adjusted. I can go drill the panel. I just need a rivet. Let's see how this works. Woo, that's perfect. All right, let's drill the other one. And I always put my drill on a slower speed too when I do this. All right, let's try this one. Woo, that looks good. All right, so I'd be ready to rivet on the nut plate right here. Now I just need to do the rest of these. All right, guys, I am going to continue with this panel on my own. It'll take a little bit of time to do, uh, to do all these and then rivet on the nut plates. And I actually don't really have too much time left today to do it. You know, it's funny, when I have my days off of work, I wanna spend as much time in the hangar as I can. So I've been ignoring some other things. Like I literally have birds flying around in my house. 
not in my house, but in my walls. Somehow they're getting in there, and they flop around in a wall, they go to the bottom, and I hear them flopping around in there until they die. So I need to figure out where these birds are coming from. I get birds that get in here in my hangar. I have my grass I need to cut. My neighbors are probably getting mad at me. I need to put down fertilizer. I have so many other things to do. I need to, to uh, go take care of some of that stuff, and then I'll, I'll uh, come back when I have time to get these nut plates installed. And then we'll continue on with the panel in the next episode. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a little something. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. Again, we'll see you on the next one.